Good morning, Wabash. <clears throat> Speaking at chapel today will be Jimmy LaRue. LaRue, I got it, LaRue, with his talk entitled Response Over Reaction, Live to Survive or Live to Thrive. Jimmy LaRue graduated from Wabash College in 2014 with a major in psychology and minor in rhetoric. While at Wabash, he was a four-year varsity letter winner for the wrestling team. During his wrestling career, the Max Desire Award title was changed to the Jimmy LaRue Desire Award in 2014 for overcoming adversity from a car accident in 2011. After Wabash, Jimmy became a doctor of occupational therapy from Huntington University and started his own company, Empowered by Three. Throughout Jimmy's career as a doctor of occupational therapy, he was privileged to rebuild the occupational therapy program at ENMMC in the setting of outpatient and inpatient acute in Roswell, New Mexico. Today, Jimmy is building the occupational therapy program at Angels of Mercy Home Healthcare in Warsaw, Indiana. Amid all these experiences, Jimmy has, has been honored to study from the best and pursue excellence in the realm of life skills and personal growth to empower others to empower themselves. Please join me in welcoming Jimmy LaRue. I see some females. So, ladies and gentlemen, hello. How are we doing today? Good. Good. I'm better than I deserve. Thanks for asking. But uh, no, geez, what an honor it is. Seriously, absolutely. It's amazing to see old faces and new faces, men that are, whether they're already men or you're becoming men because you're not a Wabash man until you graduate. So uh, it's pretty awesome. You guys are cool. One thing, too, if we say cool, you say at the pool, all right? <laughs> So gentlemen, uh, usually people are up here in their suit and tie and just dress for success. But I wanted to tell you guys that the reason I'm dressed the way that I am is to illustrate that impact can happen among any, many uniforms. Scrubs are one of them. I've met many people at times of vulnerability and the lowest points of their lives in these scrubs. And it has and will continue to be an honor to serve those that are, <clears throat> that are in need, which is why I'm here to serve you in the same outfit. So what we're going to get to today, guys, is your why. So I'll ask you, what's your why? Yeah. What? To be the best that I can be. That is absolutely beautiful. Let's give him a clap. Yeah. All right, I won't quiz anybody anymore. I know, that's, that's really hard. <laughs> um, but guys, why is, why is your why important? Have you guys ever thought about that? Why is your why important? So the thing is, is that if I ask you, if I say, all right, listen here, Sarah, I'm going to have you take this. You see that line right there? Go ahead and walk it. Let's, let's go. She starts doing it, right? She's like, oh, I got this, you know? Starts walking down, and if I take a chair and I put it in front of her, she'll stop. Literally 95% of the time, there's empirical evidence that suggests that that will happen because she does not have a destination. So that's the same thing when we try to walk away from bad habits or anything of that nature. We always look back. Right? I go back to my old ruts. You know, you're once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic, right? No, absolutely not. Okay? So that's why we have to find our why. Because if I give you a destination, I say, Sarah, here's what I need you to do. I need you to walk to that door and do your best to be your best. Get there. All right? She's going to walk. If I put a chair in her way, she's going to walk around it. She's going to freaking throw it out of the way. It doesn't matter because she's got her destination in front of her and nothing's going to stop her because she will until. If it is to be, it's up to her. Right? <clears throat> So with, with that comes my why. So I want to share you guys just a small example. My why is impact and love. So what is impact? Impact is where that person leaves you feeling better off had they never met you before. And that might be through just truly a smile or acknowledging somebody's existence because you don't know the, the, the way that the wind is blowing on somebody at that particular moment. I almost got emotional. That's neat. <laughs> But that's impact, gentlemen. And basically, smiling and laughter is a piece of that. So I'm just going to derail here just for a second. Does everybody agree that smiling is good for you? That's a good thing to do. Yes? Yes, right? Own it. Mm, you have a choice, okay? So I have the choice to smile. Now, when I literally go from here to this, I literally just had a neurochemical change in my brain that has a cumulative effect on my entire body right? It's amazing. It's actually a coping skill in mental health. It's awesome. So 
I just want to encourage you guys to think about that. When you're feeling down, go to that place. Think of those things that make you smile, whether it's best fails, babies laughing, whatever it is. Think of it. Babies laughing, that's a weird example, but I got a video that will prove it to you. It will make you smile, I promise. <laughs> um, but that's for us, right? What about people on the receiving end? Because I talked about love, right? Love is selfless, not selfish. So what does smiling do for somebody on the receiving end? If you see me, I'm just walking here and you just seem like this. How do you feel? Hmm. Douche, right? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but that's what I think of, right? Lack of better words. And that's, that's the opportunity that you have. It's not about what other think, others think about you. It's for yourself. Your expectations are in yourself, nobody else. But that's what the smiling gives. For me, it welcomes me. I feel a warm feeling in my heart. Because if I was to explain love to a blind man, I can talk about temperature. I can talk about these things. Because you can't always see love, right? <clears throat> so just to share with you guys smiling and impact, I want to share a small story with you guys. There's this kid. He's in high school, and he had a lot of stuff going on. Basically, he's carrying all these books, right? All these books. Everybody's kind of just judging, like, what's this guy doing, right? He walks, he walks, and trips. He goes all over the floor, right? And everybody still just keeps on walking. But this one guy that lives his life with love, love to him, his standard, and it was Jesus in that situation. But he saw this happen. He walks over to that guy. He's like, what's up, bro? You need some milk, man? What's up? What's your name? We should connect sometime, bro. God bless you, bro. See you later. Right? That's just how he lives his life. Now that young man that was carrying his books, he became a motivational speaker. You know what he says in his speeches? Is that was one of the worst days of his entire life. And he was at the end of his rope and he was ready to give up. So he had all those books so he could carry them home and he could climb something so he could hang himself. But because that guy took a moment out of his day to acknowledge his existence, he felt purpose and he felt worth it. And I wanna tell every single one of you right here, right now, that you are worth it. All day, every day, okay? Not when you're successful, not only when you're successful, not only when you fail, you are always worth it, so don't forget. Now, to go on with that, got this cool little story of the boy with the books, right? Let's move on. So we got love. What is love? Man, that's a loaded word, right? So with love, guys, love, it's, it's literally in 1 Corinthians, it's all kinds of things. I'm gonna say that Jesus lived it, okay? So, have you guys ever heard the song Love by Jason May? If you haven't, go ahead and look it up. You got YouTube. It's cool at the pool. Check it out. But basically, what I've learned is that love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It's not proud. It's not rude. It's not self-seeking. And it's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but it rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. That's love for me, fam. And man, it is cool at the pool every day, every moment. I can experience it, right? So true love, guys, is sacrifice. It's thinking of others before yourself. Love is laying down your life for others. It's the only thing that'll last when you die. It's eternal, okay? So with this piece of structure, we talked about how to live to survive or live to thrive. I, uh, I was gonna come up here and just let the Lord have me say whatever he wanted me to say. But then uh, Frank says, what's the title of your speech? <laughs> I was like, oh, well, I didn't have a plan. So I uh, said, response over reaction, live your life to survive or live your life to thrive. And that's what we're gonna dive into today, together as a team, because teamwork makes the dream work, right? <laughs> and dream works, what's that make? It makes Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> Now, just to kind of dive into this structure of response over reaction, you write that. Response, align, and then reaction. You want to have a response instead of a reaction in moments. It's gonna be hard. But if you do all the hard things in life, life will be easy. You do all the easy things in life, life will be hard. It's weird, right? Gosh dang. But a reaction, there's three main things. There's a lot of things that mediate and go into a reaction. But the main primary things is one, impulse right? We have a lot of impulses. That's reaction. Then it's emotion. And then the third part is focus on myself. How dare that dude say that? You know what I'm saying? What's up? Shoot. Right? That's a reaction, <clears throat> right? It's quick. Oh man, don't you dare, right? I get a lot of reactions when I think of Coach Anderson sometimes. I'm ready to double leg him, you know what I'm saying? A little blast double action. 
I'm sorry. But seriously. Okay. <laughs> so we understand a reaction, right? Impulse, emotion, and focus on myself. So now a response is a little different. Response requires something bigger. Response is where you think first. I know it's really hard, especially when you got all that emotions and the adrenaline and the testosterone and endorphins, whatever, you know, your body chemistry is. It doesn't matter. It's still hard, okay? But a response is you think first in that very moment, which is hard to do, but make a habit. Everybody go like this real quick. Nice, nice. You look good. You look powerful. They say when you do this before a speech, you'll do better. <laughs> I don't know why. Actually, I do, but we're not going to talk about it right now. So when you switch it, go ahead and switch. Isn't that weird? Someone like, <laughs> it's just weird, right? But I'm going to tell you guys why it's weird. Because you're not confined by the person you were yesterday or the person you were five minutes ago. You're confined by the habits you have formed. So form good habits. Form habits that generate a response instead of a reaction, right? So with that response, I'm going to think first. Gosh, Jimmy, get to the next two, right? My goodness. So think first. The second part is deny yourself. You got to cross yourself out just for a second to have a higher perspective and be objective in that situation, right? To where emotion cannot be tied to it because emotion will trump logic every time if you let it, right? Now, the last part of a response is to show love and it's the love that I was talking about. Now, one way to show love with a response or a reaction is basically the love I've learned is praise, criticism, praise. It's a quality intervention, quality way to structure your mind when you're thinking, how can I show this love when I'm so ticked off, right? Well, <laughs> praise, criticism, praise, I got it in a very valuable book. It's called How to Win Friends and Influence People. Yes, by Dale Carnegie, stud, my goodness. I'm like, dang, Jimmy, you come up with that? No, I didn't, I don't have to. There's a lot of truth out there already. So my, Bi my Bible, that's funny. The books that I recommend is the Bible first, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie, Emotional Intelligence 2.0 by Travis Bradbury, and Multipliers by Liz Wiseman, okay? I encourage you guys to check those out. There's a lot more, but those are my favorites. Now, to go into a response or reaction example, I'm gonna give you guys just a little, little piece of my life when I was 12 years old, okay? So, little Jimmy, right? I'm still not that big, I know, it's cool. I still got uh, Nate Skull in my mind. He was a big time football player, and he said, you gotta eat big to get big, little dude. I was like, all right, sounds good, you know? <laughs> but he's right, anyways. <clears throat> so, especially at this time of 12 years old, I was definitely small, okay? I was about 75 pounds. I had a lot of might in me. I was ready to go, you know what I'm saying? I had ADHD, I still do, it's fine. Um, <laughs> can you tell, squirrel? That's fine. So with that being said, I was pretty excited about life. I had what I call joy already, but I didn't know how to title it and I didn't know how to harness it yet, which we'll get to here in a second. But basically the way that we heated our house when I was little was firewood. And my dad, he says, Jimmy, I need you to go out and get some firewood. Yes, sir, right away, sir. And when I started doing it, right? I'm doing, I'm doing such a good job, you know? And uh, I'm pulling this wagon, which is way bigger than me, right? <laughs> I'm getting it in. I get it all the way in there, and it's done. Yes! Dad comes downstairs. Dad had a long day. 11-hour day, to be exact. Dude, he was tired. He drove super far. Got in this, just long story short, hard day. He's exhausted, right? And that's when a reaction happens many times, gentlemen. Because you're going to get freaking tired when you're studying all the time, right? Dude, gosh. Anyways. He's tired. He comes downstairs. He sees what I did wrong. Impulse first. Idiot! Right? Gosh! So that's the impulse first, then emotion. Whoa, man! Here he comes downstairs. You're gonna be me. Is that okay? I will not touch you, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> but he comes downstairs. He says, Jimmy, how many times do I gotta tell you? Do this, 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 and this. Grow a freaking brain. And he walks back upstairs. Hmm. What did I learn in that situation? I learned that dad's a prick and I can't really do anything right. Thanks, dude. Gosh, you rock. <laughs> Man, see how that works out in business and anything in life, your marriage, anything. Cool, at the pool. So, that's a reaction. Let's rewind real quick. Cause I feel bad for Clark right now, you know what I'm saying? Let's rewind, let's go back. We can't go back, but let's uh, do better for the future. So we're here, we got a response. So dad comes downstairs, he sees what I did wrong. 
impulse is still there. You cannot control the thoughts that come into your mind and the impulses that are going to try to take you out. But you can control if you say focus on them, right? So he thinks first. He gets higher than that impulse and that thought and that emotion. And he denies himself. This is Jimmy. 12-year-old little Jimmy with ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> Cannot sit still, right? And then he denies himself, right? That's it. That's it. This is my little Jimmy. Now, how can I show love? Okay. Praise, criticism, praise. All right. Positive, negative, positive. Pay attention to the structure, gentlemen. All right. Positive. He comes downstairs. Jimmy, hey. Thanks for doing that, you, buddy. You're a hard worker. And I've always loved that about you. Positive, right? That's kind of nice of you to say, right? I freaking didn't do it, right? But that was nice. That's one thing. He could draw the light out of it, right? He pulled the light out of little Jimmy. Gosh dang it. So he goes with the positive, right? Gosh, you're a hard worker. I've always loved that about you. Now, for next time, transition into the negative. For next time, you want to make it a little easier on you and me? Go ahead and do this, this, and this. Wow, I can take that, right? He just cushioned it pretty well. I can take that negative now. Then he ends it with the positive. But again, thank you so much for doing what I asked you. I can't wait to see how good of a job you do next time. Love you, son. He walks back upstairs. Dang, dude. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to go get some more wood. <laughs> right? So guys, I just want to challenge every single one of you to have a response instead of a reaction in situations. When someone comes at you all wrong, stop thinking about yourself. Get a higher perspective. Maybe this dude right here, this woman, whatever, whoever's coming at me wrong in this situation, according to my standards, maybe they got some different standards. Or maybe they never got to get standards because they lived their whole life with abuse and a lot of other words that I just don't want to talk about right now, right? Maybe that's how their life was. So I can get over myself for just a second and show a response instead and show some love, right? Then it can be a lesson for all of us because I can live with myself if I show a response. That's my expectation is myself, not in them. So if I'm like, I show that, expect, I do that response, they have the choice too. They can show a reaction or a response too. Reaction like, mind your own business, right? Okay, thank you, see ya, right? <laughs> but maybe they show a response too. Yeah, dude, let's talk about it. Thank you. Mm. Well, if I live my life for impact and purpose and love, then I just got it right there, right? So guys, I want to share one thing with you is uh, among every trial and tribulation, adversity comes opportunity, joy, perseverance, and love. A lot of people don't know the difference between joy and happiness. Because a lot of people, oh, I just want to be happy. Yeah? Good luck. It's a dark world. Because happiness, happiness depends upon what happens. It's circumstantial. Okay? But joy is something that's internal. It's the light in you. All right? And it's something that can never be taken away. Jimmy, you're so happy all the time. No, I'm not. I'm joyous, right? I've learned how to harness it, and I maximize it every single day. So, again, among every trial, tribulation, adversity comes opportunity, joy, perseverance, and love. One thing that I've learned, gentlemen, is that it all comes down to a choice in every moment, to choose to survive or thrive among your thoughts and your actions. When life becomes more than just you, empowering others becomes the greatest gift that we were ever put on this earth for. Love is selfless, not selfish. And I'm forever thankful for the opportunity to maximize my life among maximizing others who choose it. Gentlemen, you got to remember commitment. You do not get what you want in life. You get what you're committed to. So take a good hard look in the mirror and think about that. All right? Because that's the first level of a response, right? Think first. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Guys, I want to end it with one thing. I want you just to repeat after me. Are you ready? Okay. I am ready. To move, to move forward in my life so that I can be, so that I can be the best me that, that I can be. Let's get it. Let's get it. You got it, fam. Guys, do you mind if I entered in prayer? For those that don't believe in that, that's okay. Just pay attention to the principles here, okay? So here we go. Merciful Lord, I want to thank you so, so much just for your love, your mercy, and your grace, Lord. Love is something that I try to comprehend every day. I try to reflect, Lord. It's hard but it's worth it. Lord, I thank you for your mercy where I don't get what I do deserve, Lord, which is eternity in hell because we all fall short of the glory of God. So you give your mercy to me, Lord. And then you give me your grace, which is something that I don't deserve, and that's eternity in heaven. So thank you for that too. 
Lord, I pray that uh, we can all just receive your divine intervention in our lives as well as the lives of others, Lord, that we can just praise you for your loving kindness, your character, your works, your selflessness, your patience. Lord, that list goes on, and I pray that we can reflect those moments, those opportunities of impact in every day, every moment of our life. Lord, I pray that we shift in the one gear that you know, and that's forward, never reverse. In your precious name we pray, amen. Thank you, gentlemen.